Hello friends, welcome back. So today I will explain Barlow Twins Self-Revised Learning Model via Redundancy Reduction. Authors of this paper are Yuret Subota, Ling Jing, Ishan Mishra, Yan Ling Kung, and Stefan Densing. So this is the outline. Here first I will give the background because even to understand the motivation, I should give you some background so that you can understand it. Uh, after that I will explain why we are doing this model uh, method and uh, followed by Barlow Twins architecture and then I will explain the outcomes. Okay, let's start with the background. So in these days we have three main challenges for AIs. AI. So first one, learning with fewer labels uh, and fewer trials. So for example, humans, we don't need so many examples. So for example, distinguish between a uh, car and bicycle, we don't need so many different examples to distinguish between them. So yeah, learn from fewer trials and with fewer labels. Learning to reason that why it is like that. So for example, sky, it should be always up. It cannot be down, right? So something like that. Learning to plan complex action sequences. So for example, if you have the video, then of what should be the coming frame. So that's how, uh, so here is the chart how human learns. So in x-axis, you can see the age in months and in y-axis, you can see a uh, learning range. Okay. So here you can see that, okay, at the age of six months, baby learns about stability and support and it learn about gravity. So for example, pen, if, it, if I drop a pen, it will go down and not up. So something like that. And at the, and the age of 10th month, it start crawling and followed by walking. And here we will see that, okay, uh, how monkey learns something. Let's see the video first. And here you can see that monkey has learned that, okay, uh, so for example, if berry is inside then and if you put the decal on it on, the, on your cup, then it automatically it will not come out of it, right? So monkey has not predicted that and it leads to this uh, funny moment. So it also could lead, I mean, psychologically, it could also shock someone that, okay, it has, uh, someone has not predicted, but anyways, it's, here yeah, monkey finds it's funny. So yeah, here you can see that how monkey has learned something that, okay, something cannot go out from decal, right? Okay, so there are uh, three main kind of uh, learning method, supervised learning method, unsupervised learning method, and self-supervised learning method. Here, uh, the first method, it's very simple. You have the data, you have the image, and you have the label, and then with the neural network, you predict the label, right? In unsupervised learning method, uh, the power is actually limited. So yeah, you have some image and you try to uh, cluster it or so from, from, from your main image data. And in self-supervised learning model, derived label from co-occurring input to another uh, modality. So here, the power is within the image. So here what we do that, okay, first we extract some important information from the image and then we use this extracted uh, layers to predict something or to perform some task. Okay, so for example, here self supervised learning model is equal to learning to fill in the blanks. And here you can see that, okay, these first two images are from past and next two images are, from, are the future. And here, for example, if you see this picture, then we do not see the uh, big difference between past and future. So for example, here, how it predicts that, okay, for example, uh, will I move, uh, if, if I'm looking towards you, then I will move my head towards left or right so yeah it has same probability and here what it will do that it will try to reduce the mean square error loss and that's why here we are getting the blurry image so there are two main kind of self-supervised learning method the first one is constructive method and second one is architectural method in constructive methods the examples are energy based model denoising autoencoder but in architectural method the examples are deep clustering bottleneck autoencoder and bca in coming slides, I will explain both of these uh, in detail. So let's understand the constructive method first. And here you can see that, okay, here what happened that if we have two similar images, then we try to reduce the energy, 
the less energy for the same similar images and high in high energy for uh, other images right so for example here we are highly depending on our batch size right so for example if we do so okay let's okay so this is the example of this this is seem clear uh, constructive method and here you can see that okay first we feed the data for the image augmentation and then it repels the opposite image or other image and attract the similar images right and this particular method is highly dependent on batch size because here for what it will do that it will attract for the similar image and repel all the images of batch size so that's why our accuracy is highly dependent on our on batch size which is biggest disadvantage and now uh, the architectural method uh, the one of the example is cluster fit method so here our goal is to predict the label uh, so for that what we can do that we can first take the pre-trained model so this pre-trained network can be anything so this can be jigsaw puzzle or uh, uh, predicting the rotation or it can be anything and from this by implementing the k-means uh, method we get the cluster labels and we use these cluster labels to train this network from scratch so in fit what we do that we take this label label from this network and then we train this network from scratch why we are doing this so empirically it is proven that uh, we get better results. So it generalizes the model well, right? So this is the reason Okay, so now let's understand the motivation the motivation is label label the unlabeled data Yeah, okay. We all the time we don't get labeled data. So yeah, and and uh, Our method should not depend on batch size because yeah because of this RAM limitation We cannot like increase the batch size uh, work well in higher dimensional embedding. So for example, if we increase the end embedding layer, we should get better result and it should be competitive to state-of-the-art model and this is the most important thing at least for me that this particular method it is motivated from actually how human learns. Okay, so according to neuroscientist H. Barlow, so what he uh, hypothesized that how we actually learn something from or how we actually differentiate between two images is uh, by extracting the maximum information from, from, from the image or from whatever we see. So that's that from there the Barlow names came. Okay. Okay, so now let's understand the architecture of Barlow twins. So this is the architecture of Barlow twins and here what happens, okay, first we fed the image here and then we perform the image argumentation, the distorted image. Uh, and after that we fed it into neural network. So this can be any neural network, this can be ResNet50 or anything. And after that this representation layer, it, it, we can also say this is the project projector layers. And after that we multiply this together which is called cross correlation and here what we try to do that we try to get maximum information by getting the one on the diagonal term and zero on off diagonal term okay now let's understand this in detail so in image documentation what we do that we always apply this random cropping and resizing for all augmentation and with some probability we apply horizontal flipping, color jittering, converting to grayscale, Gaussian blurring and solarization. So it will look something like this. Okay, so the okay, so these are the two different augmentation. Okay. Okay, so first one this cross correlation matrix. So here what we do that here we simply perform matrix multiplication of this uh, uh, of these vectors and then we normalize this why we normalize this so they they are saying that okay empirically it is showing better result that's it so they didn't give any uh, uh any strong reason behind this but this is, they just they just said that okay empirically it showed better result okay now let's understand the loss okay so okay this is the equation of a loss of barlow twins why it's called twins by the way so for example here we have two layers right so here we have two parts so that's why it's called twins and barlow as i said it's neuroscientist 
after the name of neuroscientist. Okay, so here we can see that this is the off diagonal term. So we try to reduce this off diagonal term, okay, redundancy reduction term, and this lambda is the regularization term. And then here to, to get the one on this diagonal term, what we try to do that, okay, our diagonal term should be closer to one. Okay, so intuitively we can understand that, okay, we, we bring, we try to bring a diagonal term close to one and off diagonal term close to zero to extract the maximum information. Yeah. As I have explained that, okay, they also, they, they perform, they, they do best normalization for, for this term. Okay, so this is the image. Uh, so here you can, here I just put the uh, vector dimension. So here this will be n cross 1 and this will be n cross n. Definitely if you add, for example, batch, then this, this will be uh, batch size b cross n cross 1 this will be b n cross n b n cross n so yeah you got the point right now result okay so before understanding the result here is the overview so here first of all uh, first one is a uh, constructive learning method so for example here what we do is have as we have seen in background that here what it does that it try to reduce the energy for similar images and try to increase the energy for opposite uh, uh, images and so yeah this is the constructive learning and this depends on batch size then this is the distillation in bilo so what, what we what we saw in in our last lecture and uh, yeah here you can yeah yes as as uh, sebastian has explained that okay what well, we don't back propagate for, through this channel only through this channel and we can also see this as a teacher and student channel okay this is the deep clustering so yeah it's very similar to Destillation, but here instead of predicting something, we cluster it, and this is the our method, uh, Barlow twins, where we try to extract maximum information. Okay, so uh, for for the uh, comparison, they have used this dimension for the Barlow twins, and here I have also cross checked that okay, first they reduce and they again increase, but yeah, I cross checked it. It is like that. And they train the model for 300 epochs. So, for example, here they will compare Sim Sinclair and uh, uh, BYOL method, and all the models they train for 300 epochs. And here we can see that okay, how sensitive our model is to this image augmentation. So here we can see that byol it's not so sensitive to image augmentation but our model is actually sensitive to image augmentation at first glance we can see that ah uh, maybe this is not this is not good but actually in one way this is good because you know our image augmentation actually actually we are learning something from image augmentation but here you can see that okay in byol image augmentation it does not play that big role right but here in our model as we can see that okay it is it is learning something from uh, image augmentation so which is good okay now here what we do the we, we increase the dimensionality of our last layer and then here we can see that our model it is by increasing the projector dimensionality we are learning something so our accuracy is going up here we can see that okay at lower embedding layer the accuracy is very high but here we can see that after some point it's stagnant it didn't learn that much but here we can see that okay it is by increasing the dimensionality our accuracy is increasing so we are actually using the higher dimension okay so for performance comparison of what we have done that in Barlow Twins, they train their model uh, for, for 1000 epochs on ResNet50 and ImageNet dataset. And then they freeze this network and only train this uh, label. They had the label and then they only train only the final layer. Only this layer. Okay. And here we can see that Barlow Twins, we have 73.2, although uh, it is not giving the state of the art result, but still it is not not that far either 
so yeah it is showing yeah so here we can see that actually here in this case uh, SWAV here this particular model is showing better result okay now this is a semi supervised learning model as, as we have seen uh, in previous case here we, we freeze this model and then we train only the last layer only fine tune the last layer and then here we can see that okay for less label for top one and top five with one percentage of the label Barlow twins is giving the best result so here we can see that okay this is giving 55.0 percentage uh, accuracy and here 80 percentage accuracy which is good okay so in summary what we have learned so this particular method is self-supervised learning method uh, why we are learning this method to extract the uh, maximum information to use actually the higher dimension and the architecture is very simple to implement and it is it is providing a result comp uh, near to state-of-the-art model and this particular model is actually motivated how human learns so yeah and how we are doing this by reducing the uh, redundancy that's it thank you very much guys